In this video, I'm super excited to announce the addition of our AI analyst built directly into Copilot. So whether you're drowning in alerts or trying to assess threat levels in the context of the alerts, or just need help writing Wazoo exclusion rules, then this AI feature will be for you. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So here uh, within Copilot, I'm on my alert section here. If you haven't already configured Copilot for to handle your Wazoo alerts, then I'll link to uh, a video down below where you can first configure that because that will be a prereq before being able to interact with the AI analyst. The AI analyst is built directly into Copilot's alerts. So let's go ahead and check out this potential reconnaissance for cache credentials via cmdkey.exe. So if I open up this alert and if I go into the assets tab, here I'll be able to select the host name that this alert was triggered on. So I'll go ahead and select that host name and you'll see we have two new buttons here. We have generate Wazoo exclusion rule and then we have AI analyst. Before we trigger one of these guys, let's go ahead and actually look at the context of the alert. So if we look at the context of the alert, here we're stripping out some important fields that pertain to our uh, Windows alert. And here we see that this command line was invoked with the cmd.exe. I see some stuff with some users, cmdkey.exe. So here we see that, we see a list, I see a net local group. So, okay, what exactly is going on here? Maybe if I'm a SOC analyst, like why is this being triggered as a Wazoo alert? And I wanna understand some more context of this alert. Well, here I can go ahead and select the AI analyst and what this is going to do is invoke our models that we're running within the cloud that have been trained on our Wazoo alerts to give us back more insight and context so that I can understand a little more about this alert and can help inform me to come to a, a conclusion of, is this something we wanna investigate further or is this something benign? So now that we've gotten our response back, let's go ahead and go through what the AI is presenting us with. So we're first set with a section to understand the alert. So here we see that this was triggered by a Sysmon event one process. So we're getting a little understanding as to, okay, how is this alert uh, kind of being categorized, right? Sysmon event one, which indicates a process creation. So we know that a process was created. And then the specific alert described is suspicious Windows command shell execution, and it's associated with that command key.exe, which we saw within the, the command line parameters. Um, this utility is part of the Windows operating system and is used for managing stored usernames and passwords. So that's kind of interesting. Maybe someone's trying to do something with usernames and passwords. Let's dive a little more deeper into understanding if this could be a potential threat or not. So in our con contextualizing the data, here we just get um, some of the, the metadata stripped down in a little easier to read format. Here we see our command line, cmdkey.exe slash list, and then we get our full uh, parent command process here. And then we see parent process of cmd.exe, so just the command prompt was launched with the command line of the details that we were looking at uh, within the context of the alert just a second ago. But let's now analyze, okay, is this a potential threat or not? So the execution of uh, command key.exe with the list parameters suggests an attempt to list stored credentials. This action, especially when executed by the uh, cmd.exe shell, can be indicative of credential harvesting attempts. The parent command line shows a sequence of commands that could be used for rec reconnaissance and privilege escal escalation. So net user and net local group commands are used for user and group enumeration. The directory of C users lists directories under the users folder potentially to identify users profile. So it sounds like this alert was triggered because there looks to be an attempt to enumerate users and possibly their groups that they're associated with to maybe target specific users for like a brute force attack. If I see a user as part of like an administrator group or a domain admin group, right? So it looks like there's some reconnaissance going on here. Um, we then get a little more details such as the process analysis. So let's go ahead and open it. Let's go ahead and open a virus total. And let's throw in that hash value here. And let's see if that correlates to the cmd.exe binary. And sure enough, it does. And if we look at the details, uh, it is signed by Microsoft. So this is a signed and valid signature, meaning that this isn't 
any malware that's just renamed, you know, cmdkey.exe. This is legitimate part of the Windows operating system. Now, while the executable itself isn't malicious, how it was actually ran and invoked is something of suspicion. And that's exactly what our AI analyst is telling us here. Um, there is no base 64 encoded strings, so that's good. So this alert indicates that a command was ran on a computer to list save passwords. This could be a normal action done by administrator for maintenance, but it could also be a sign of someone trying to steal passwords if done without proper authorization. So the use of cmdkey.exe in conjunction with the other command line tools suggests a potential script or manual attempt to gather information about user accounts and stored credentials. The high integrity level of the process indicates it was run with elevated privileges, which is typical for administrative tasks, but also for malicious activities if unauthorized. So if this is action that we weren't aware that was occurring, it's definitely something that we should investigate further. We should verify the legitimacy of the user um, that actually ran these commands. The use can be legitimate, but the context of its execution on this alert suggests a need for further investigation to rule out malicious intent. Monitoring and user education are key to preventing potential misuse. We're confident that the cmdkey.exe isn't a malicious executable in itself. How it's actually being ran is quite suspicious. And that's because it's trying to list users in their groups that they are a part of, which can be an indicator of credential harvesting. Let's go ahead and check out another alert. Let's look at the system file execution location anomaly uh, alert. Again, I'm going to select my asset here. Uh, let's go ahead and first look at our context. So, so here we see PowerShell being invoked and then I see this long encoded string here. So let's go ahead and ask our AI analyst and see if it can actually decode this encoded command into uh, allowing us to see in a human readable fashion what it actually is attempting to do. And you'll notice the label here has been flagged with a risk being high. So our AI analyst is telling us, hey, this is definitely something that you need to look at. But let's go ahead and understand a little bit of what, why it's listing this as high. Again, we have our Sysmon event, Sysmon one event, um, which does indicate a process creation. Uh, suggesting a PowerShell has initiated another PowerShell process. This is often associated with scripting or automation tasks, but can also indicate malicious activity, especially if PowerShell is used to execute encoded commands. So here the command line includes an encoded PowerShell command, which is often used to obfuscate the command being executed. This is a common technique used in attacks to hide malicious scripts. The base 64 encoded string needs to be decoded to understand the exact command being executed. So it's telling us we need to decode this to see what exactly is going on. And so we can see exactly what it's doing. And here it's looking to start this calc.exe, where in this instance, since this is just a demo, uh, this is a benign uh, process. This is benign, but this could definitely be used for far more malicious uh, purposes, such as like the profile could be uh, modified to execute commands that like download malware or exfiltrate data, right? This could be any type of EXE uh, that has nefariously been added to our system. And then the use of this profile is also a little suspicious because this is a subtle way to establish uh, persistence. But the important thing is that I can now understand what this encoded command is doing in a human readable format. So I get full context of, of the command being ran. And then here we get our thread indicators tab. So the decoded string contains PowerShell commands that modify the user profile to execute calc.exe on startup. This behavior is suspicious and involves persistence mechanisms and execution of potentially one of programs. Now, again, this calc.exe could be anything. This could be malware.exe or please subscribe.exe. That's doing something malicious on your endpoints. So we're, the AI analyst is even helping us decode encoded commands that is commonly used in attacks. All right, uh, let's look at this other one, uh, this other alert, Windows shell scripting process spawning suspicious commands. Again, I'm gonna select my asset. Let's look at the context first so we can try to understand this alert a little better. Um, and here we see the OSEC, it's actually the OSEC agent and it's invoking this open audit.vbs. Now I know that this is a uh, legit script that I've put together, a Visual Basic script, um, that gives us more telemetry as to the software installed on the endpoint, uh, network interfaces, uh, what hypervisor it's running on. So I know that this is a legitimate 
script that I have authorized to run on my endpoint. So let's go ahead and use our AI analyst to generate a Wazoo exclusion rule because I don't necessarily want this to keep on creating alerts. And here we get our uh, Wazoo exclusion rule generated by our AI. Now, I wouldn't just directly copy and paste this into the manager. I would definitely review it, make sure it's capturing everything that I want to capture. Like here, for example, I would add the OSEC agent directory as part of this as another field name. But this has gotten the syntax correct for me, so I can just pretty much copy and use this as a great example for building out the remaining portion of my rule um, before I apply it and restart the Wazoo Manager process. So hopefully this will be a really good tool for you to leverage to assist with building your Wazoo uh, exclusion rules as they are needed. So that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Um, I'm really excited to bring this to you guys. I hope it helps your SOC analysts understand the alerts and kind of make a little more sense as to why Wazoo is alerting on what it's alerting on. So that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. I appreciate your time and I will see you in the next one.